Some things are so personal. Uh, I'm Ray Rickman. I am a ex-former, once Detroiter. And in my youth, when I was 15, 16, I'd go to hear Aretha Franklin sing for free. You ready? I went to New Bethel, to her, her father's church. C.L. Franklin, one of the most famous ministers in America had a daughter who was one of the best singers in America, not yet professional. We all knew it was just a matter of weeks or days. And you'd go there and you'd have to stand in line to get in church when Aretha was going to sing. And they never told you. And I'd just go once a month to his church. Uh, they were Baptists, and I was a Methodist, but I showed up to hear Aretha sing. And C.L. Franklin was one of the best preachers in the world. So you were in for a lively 90 minutes or two hours, whatever. C.L. Franklin could give a 45-minute sermon. Aretha never sung more than two songs. Sometimes she'd only sing one. She'd leave you wanting, wanting more. That's when I was a teenager. Later, in my late 20s, I was on WJAR, the great radio station. It uh, reached from Detroit, from the Fisher Building, to 17 states. It didn't come to Rhode Island, but 17 states. And I had a five-minute show every Thursday. Uh, Henry Ford II was on uh, Wednesday, and I was on Thursday. And I was supposed to talk about urban affairs, and I generally did. And sometimes I'd talk about what Henry Ford had talked about. And then he'd call me up, and we actually became friends. But I opened every five-minute Thursday segment with Aretha Franklin. 30 seconds of Aretha, and then 30 seconds underneath my getting started about some urban subject or public schools or public parks or whatever I was talking about. And then I would close with, generally with Diana Ross, but every once in a while with Aretha Franklin underneath my clothes. It was so fabulous. It um, enriched whatever I was going to talk about. And there was this contest, who did we love the most, Diana Ross or Aretha Franklin in Detroit? Contest. Now, on the other side, there was no question it was Stevie Wonder. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure of that. It could have been Marvin Gaye some weeks. It was a wonderful time in Detroit before the city collapsed, and Aretha was part of that. Uh, Detroit was Motown, the Supremes and the Four Tops and all, you know, Dinah Ross, all those folks, the Temptations. But Aretha lived there. And she, though not part of Motown, she was as popular as they were. I found it fascinating. About two years ago, Aretha went home. She was ill. And she went home to her youthful place to be a part of the city she loved. You know, not to be in LA or New York or someplace like that, but to be in Detroit. And the talk, almost mythical, is that Aretha came home to help Detroit rise. Now, she said so. This is a woman all her life, really, a quiet civil rights advocate, the donator of money to the NAACP and directly to Dr. King, as her father, C.L. Franklin, did as well. And then she came home to live in the battered city for the last years of her life to help it rise. Aretha, go in peace. And thank you for a lifetime of music and song and inspiration and caring. Detroit will miss you. America will miss you. The nation will miss you.